What's up everybody, it's Stas here, and in this video we're going to be talking about and breaking down the top couple of stocks and ETFs that I'm watching and looking to trade heading into this first week of December in 2019. And I also want to break down with you all what the markets did last week simply by looking at the 5-day, five 5-minute five chart here on the S&P 500. And I also want to show you all what the stock market futures are looking like right now because as most of you know, every Sunday at 6 p.m. Eastern, Eastern Standard Time, the futures market opens so we can see, you know, what the S&P is trading at, the NASDAQ, um, the Dow, natural gas, you know, gold in terms of their futures. And that's really important when planning the upcoming week. And of course, I'm going to be breaking down natural gas and Tesla guys like you read in the title. So sit back, relax. If you enjoy this video, if you find value in this video, simply go down below, hit that like button for me and consider subscribing if you want to see further comments content for me and if you want to be further connected with the strive smart community the discord link is down below as well as the facebook group and i'm still running a 20 percent black friday merch sale on the merch which is linked down below as well strivesmartstore.com is the url so guys Let's get into it here, talking about um, the S&P 500 very quickly to get an idea of what happened last week and last week's session. So we can see here on the five-day, five-minute, it was actually a pretty green week throughout the entire week up until Friday when we saw that retracement of about 0.4%, down about $12.65 on that day. So you guys can see, you know, we were pretty much higher every single day, and then we gapped down. And if we pull back to this 20 day, one hour chart, it makes sense because the S&P, it seems like every single time it gets a bit overextended, it pulls down, it retraces, it sees a healthy pull down to that 50 SMA, which is this green line here on the hourly chart. So the fact that we're pulling down makes sense. And honestly, guys, um, maybe we pull down to test that 50 SMA, but judging on what the futures are looking like right now, I don't don't know if we'll get that. It seems like the S&P and the markets in general want to open up green um, tomorrow based on these futures and based on how quickly they're moving up here um, six, uh, since 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So let's actually talk about those futures now that we got a quick understanding of what happened um, in this past week's session. If we look at the ES, the E-mini S&P 500 index um, futures, this is up $8.25 right now up a quarter of a percent, 0.26 to be exact. The NASDAQ right now, guys, is up 26 bucks, um, up about 0.31%, so that's a nice gap up. And the Dow right now is up 0.27%, up 75 points. So the futures in terms of the three major markets that I track and I personally cover on, these, on this channel, they're up between 0.25 and 0.3%. And that's a really good sign, guys, because if this holds into tomorrow's session, what is that telling me? Well, that's telling me that this was simply a dip and we're going to be gapping up from this point uh, this point on the S&P and we may be going to another higher high, which in turn would be an all-time high, right? And that's pretty much how it's going to work out um, for the Dow. And again, that's if these futures hold up green, right? The Dow's probably going to be doing something like this tomorrow if these futures you know, hold green and the markets push green throughout the entire day. And of course, the same thing for the NASDAQ as well. So that's kind of the rundown of what the futures are looking like, what happened in these past five days in the market. Now let's get into what natural gas is doing. Then we'll talk about some other stocks and ETFs that I'm watching right now for this week in December, starting off this month strong. So if we pull up NGF20, which is the futures of uh, the January January futures here on natural gas, they are up almost seven cents right now, up almost three percent. And if you guys haven't been paying attention to what natural gas has been doing, actually, this has been the craziest couple of days for natural gas if you guys haven't been paying attention, which is insane. And let me show you guys what I'm talking about in terms of that. Over the past day, two days, couple of days, natural 
gas has seen a cliff dive, right? It's gone from 255, and then on Friday in particular, it went from 246 roughly all the way down to about 227. It saw a drop of, what was it, like 8%? You know, UGAS was down 22% for that day. It was just a complete bloodbath, right? And in yesterday's video, I believe the video I uploaded on Saturday, I talked about how there's a good chance, in my opinion, that UGAS was going to be a solid recovery play this week, right? Maybe on Monday, Tuesday, in the beginning of the week, I was thinking it's going to be a, a nice recovery play because natural gas got extremely oversold, guys. If we're talking about the RSI on this thing, look at that. So oversold, literally at the bottom of this chart, the RSI was at like a 5. So that's ridiculous, right? All these red candlesticks, really no green candlestick in sight. And typically when we're seeing stuff like this in terms of a pattern that's falling, 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 eventually it's going to find a bottom and rally, right? And that's exactly what we're doing right now in natural gas. And I think if we break this EMA, this light blue line here, this could fill up the gap to about that 50 SMA. And from there, we either continue the downtrend or we break out, which would be great for you guys. So how am I playing this right now? Honestly, guys, I'm looking for that EMA break here, um, you know, on this hourly chart for these January futures on natural gas. If we get that EMA break, I could see upwards of 2 to 3% upside for natural gas, giving us that nice fill um, on you guys up to that 50 SMA probably, giving us about, you know, maybe a, a 12 to 15% move on you guys, which again goes up whenever natural gas is going up. So that's kind of what I'm looking at now for natural gas and based on the futures action, that's kind of what I'm pulling away from this, right? And some levels that you should also be watching on natural gas at this point, you know, it's going to be that 50 SMA for potential rejection on natural gas and maybe a further upside for degas at that point because we've been talking about how the demand for natural gas at this point in time, it's not really too great, right? And we have a ton of production, a lot more production than we had last year, which is why these prices are low right now, right? We had a lot of production, right? We have a lot of production rather and not enough demand. So that's kind of a recipe for low prices in natural gas. And that's kind of why we, we're, we're getting these low prices and why we've been getting these low prices. So, you know, if we get this pop again, like I said, if we break out, you guys will be the play. If we get rejected and fall down, this would be a great dip on um, D gas, right? Ticker symbol DGAZ, which is on fire. So tomorrow morning, maybe we dip down to 150 here test that triple top resistance as a new support from a couple of weeks ago. This could potentially be a good entry on D gas. Maybe about 150, 155 bucks. Let's get that R side down to a healthy spot. That could be somewhere where I'm entering, right? And on you guys again, we're looking for the recovery play. It should be gapping up tomorrow morning if this ends up holding in terms of the gap up on the natural gas futures. So let's break down Tesla now that I got my little spiel on natural gas, you gas and de gas out of the way. Tesla is another one that I talked about, I believe, on Saturday's video and on uh, Thursday's video because I missed an upload on Friday. And Tesla's one that ran the 360, right? We saw their Cybertruck unveiling. We saw how many, you know, signups we got in the first weekend. I think it was like 175,000, maybe 200,000 or something like that. And ever since then, guys, you know, Tesla stock has gone from 360 down to about $330 per share. And what did that do? That pull down opened up an 8% margin of profit. And honestly, me personally, guys, I'm being honest here, I don't really see Tesla retracing too much at this point, right? I don't think we're going to see Tesla in the short term, at least dip all the way down here to 260 to 280. I just don't see it happening, honestly. So I'm viewing this dip and any dip at that matter as an attractive entry point from now in the short term, from now over the next couple of months, I'm viewing dips like that as an entry for a swing, right? So we got the dip again 
8%. And now we're starting to see some consolidation at around 328 to 330 bucks. So a couple of things could happen here. You know, we could break 330, maybe go down to about 320 bucks. And at this point, like I mentioned in my previous video, I'm looking to add shares of Tesla on this support um, because you can see it's a pretty strong level of support. It's an older resistance from back uh, in the end of October. So 320 bucks, I'm looking to add shares there. But let's say we hold 330 tomorrow, you know, and we break the EMA. That's also going to be a bullish sign, in my opinion, to add some shares. You know, if we break that EMA on that on that other time frame, what was that? The four hour chart, you know, break the EMA on the four hour chart, go to the 20 day hour chart. You know, we break that 50 SMA. That's kind of the, the combination of uh, indicators that I want to see before entering into Tesla. So I'm watching Tesla this week, guys. I'm really liking it. Ticker symbol TSLA. The next stock that I want to talk about in this video is going to be at V ticker symbol ATVI. This is another one that's looking quite bullish. We're getting a bullish cross here on the hourly chart. The 50 SMA crossing above that 180 SMA. We're seeing some price price action getting us to that $56 level. And if we zoom out to the four hour chart, you guys can see anything above 56. We really haven't broken above there quite yet, right? We haven't broken there quite yet. And I really see this level, if we break it, I see this as a massive breakout for ATV, and I've been talking about it over the past couple of weeks on the channel, and I'm simply waiting for it. If we get it, I think this thing can have a ton of potential to run more to the upside, because you can see, guys, the next resistance is at about $62.43, which is about... 12%, eh, more like 10, 11% um, higher from this $56 level. So that's a serious gain there um, if you're looking to swing trade. And if you're more of a swing trader, just look for that break, guys. I think if we break this, this thing can definitely run, especially if we get some good earnings next quarter revolving, um, you know, the Call of Duty game that came out as it's been doing some record numbers from what I've been seeing in terms of my research. So at the I'm loving that one, guys. Um, I think it's worth watching gold here at this point, too. Markets at all-time highs. Um, I think it's worth watching gold, and more in particular, GDX, which is an ETF that trades based upon gold, right? GDX, which is the Vanek Vectors ETF Trust Gold Miners ETF. And what trades upon GDX that I trade a decent amount, and actually haven't really been trading recently, but I have in my past, is JNUG and JDST, right? JNUG and JDST. ST, JNUG goes up whenever gold is going up, right? Whenever GDX in more specific is going up. So I'm going to be watching JNUG here. We had a nice 7.5% move this past Friday as the markets did see that correction. So if we see a correction in the next couple of weeks, who knows, guys? You have to have combinations of trades for any type of market, whether we're going up or down. So I think it's worth watching JNUG here. You know, if we end up seeing this leg up if these markets end up correcting, right? So JNUG goes up whenever gold is going up, right? But JDST is going up whenever gold is going down. So let's say J, uh, GDX, let me pull up GDX for you all to see this chart again. You can see this is a clear downtrend, right? And each time we've tested the 180 SMA in the past, we've gotten rejected. So let's say these markets push up, which based on these futures, they're looking like they're going to push up. This most likely will dump, right? Because gold will most likely go down if these markets continue to go up as it's been going down over the past couple of weeks as these markets have been going up, right? So we get that dump, you know, the gap down on GDX below that 180 SMA, we get that rejection. That's going to be perfect for JDST guys, right? We could end up getting a play here back up to maybe 16 bucks eventually, maybe up to, you know, 15 bucks, which does have about 10, 12% potential for profit in this tank in the store there and I'm really liking that. So another one I'm watching here guys is going to be ticker symbol NIO also known as NEO right so NEO we were talking about it in uh, last week's video I, be I believe it was on Monday or Tuesday when it was trading at about two bucks per share right I was talking about how this two dollar break this resistance break was quite bullish and it had potential to get to 240 which was that previous resistance so 
fast forward a couple of days, it ended up doing that, and we actually did not break out of that 240-250 level. We actually got rejected. We retraced down to about 227, giving us about a 9% profit opening from that pull down. And the positive thing that I'm seeing here is we're holding that 50 SMA, and it seems like we're closing, uh, we closed rather quite bullishly. Is that even a word, bullishly? Um, yeah, you guys know what I'm saying. We kind of closed bullishly. <laughs> Add that to the dictionary, guys, if it's not already a word. We closed bullishly because we saw a nice consolidation and we kind of got this little pop going after hours. So this is worth buying, not buying, this is worth watching for potential dip buy, in my opinion, just like Tesla. It's kind of in the same boat, right? Tesla, this could definitely be a dip buy, but I kind of want to see the pop first, like I mentioned. Neo, kind of the same thing thing, right? We dipped. Now I just want to see the pop. If we get that pop to 230, maybe 235, um, that's where I'm looking to add a position and maybe my swing account. So I'm going to do a uh, alert here on NEO at is at or above 235. Perfect. We'll create that. There we go. The next stock I'm looking at is Netflix, guys. This is one that, um, you know, if we go to this four hour chart, it's kind of been rallying quite aggressively since this 252 bottom. Um, it's up about 20%, which is quite impressive uh, in, in such a short time, honestly, for uh, Netflix here, NFLX. And we can see it's about to test that 315 level, 320 level, that resistance resistance, which really last time we tested it, we failed miserably. We fell all the way down to 268. So I think if we break out of 320 at this point, this could definitely see potential back up to about 335 to about 340 bucks, right? So I don't know if we'll get the straight on pop from here. We might see a retracement first to that 50 SMA, bounce on that, you know, get this RSI down a bit, get that bounce on the 50 SMA and then maybe we test 320 and honestly if that happens guys I might add a swing or an initial swing position here on 305 at 305 maybe 310 on Netflix and then add a bit more if it breaks above 316 to about nah, not 316 more like 320 bucks is where I'd be comfortable adding more money um, if we do get that dip on Netflix but if we straight up just blow by 220 or 320 20 rather tomorrow that could be an, an entry point you know on the breakout so netflix i'm watching that nflx nvidia is another one that's kind of in the same spot as netflix we're right at a resistance and the next level that we could get to if we break this resistance is quite a ways away which gives us as swing traders that profit potential so about 15 percent could be made if NVIDIA goes from 220 up to 250 bucks, is that going to happen, guys, in the short term? I have no idea, right? That's a massive, massive push. And the truth is, if I'm looking to swing trade in NVIDIA now, I'm honestly not looking to get that whole 12%. I'd be happy if I got in at 220, sold at even 225, 230 for that quick little profit. And I think that's possible, again, if we see that full-on breakout into the 220 level because that's kind of getting us in this whole new channel, in this whole new zone on NVIDIA stock. So we can see here, you know, we, we struggled a bit uh, this past week. So this can really be setting up for a beautiful breakout this week. Just keep an eye on it. This one's been hot, guys. This stock has been really, really hot. If you look on the four-hour chart, let me pull out a bit um, here, guys. I don't know why it's not working. Working. Here we go. You can see from 130 guys, it was at in the beginning of June all the way to 220 here. That's got to be a gain of around like 60% at the end of the day. Yep, about 50, 60% um, from that bottom point to where we are now. That is insane. So Nvidia definitely worth watching. Home Depot is one that I'm currently involved with. They reported earnings. Um, they lowered their guidance. The stock didn't like that. Fell from 240 down to about 217. Opened up about a 10% 
percent margin of profit. I love swing trading blue chip stocks. Um, I know a lot of you guys know that already. And if we look at Home Depot, pull up this one year chart, you can see this is simply a retracement in the stock. Each time we've pulled down, you know, we've held this nice, beautiful trend line. We've held that 180 SMA. We've held the 50 SMA, although we didn't hold it this time. Um, we're still holding that 180 SMA. You know, this is looking quite attractive in my opinion. I'm in at about 220. I'm kind of at a break even spot right now. I'm looking to add more money if we break this EMA to the upside on the one year, one day chart. If we zoom up to this 20 day chart, you guys can see if we break the EMA on this level too, I'll add more money. And ultimately, I'm looking to get out of this stock, guys, at about um, probably 230 per share. You know, that'll be a nice 3-4% profit on Home Depot if it does end up filling up there. So that's kind of what I'm looking at uh, for this one. And to end off the video, I think it's always worth watching these market ETFs, guys. Again, these markets are at all-time highs. Who knows? Anything could happen at this point. Let's say we don't come to a trade agreement by December 15th. Let's say something crazy goes, goes on with the Chinese, um, uh, the trade war with China and, and the U.S. If something goes down, this market could fall in a jiffy, right? And you need to know how to make money when the markets are going down. Obviously, most people know how to make monies uh, when the markets are going up, but when it's going down, I get a lot of questions like, how do you make money when the market's going down? What do you do? The truth is, these are some of the ETFs I trade. You know, TVIX, haven't really touched this one in a while, guys, honestly, but this is one that it goes up when there's volatility in the markets and whenever the market is selling off. Another one that I like trading when the markets are selling off, in specific the NASDAQ, is the SQQQ ETF. This is a leveraged ETF that goes up whenever the NASDAQ is selling off. And let's say you want to trade something in specific to the S&P. Let's say you don't want to trade SQQQ for the NASDAQ. Let's say you want to trade something for the S&P. You know, SPXS goes up whenever the S&P is selling off. So there's a bunch of options, right? You know, if you want to play the bull ETF, there's inverses to these. You know, SPXL goes up when the S&P is going up. You know, TQQQ goes up whenever the NASDAQ NASDAQ's going up, and I don't know if I have it here. Yes, I do. TQQQ. So these are a couple of, uh, uh, you know, tools that I have in the toolbox that I pull out when these markets are selling off, and I try to make profits from these ways um, of trading, um, being these market ETFs. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, feel free to go down below, hit that like button, consider subscribing if you want to see further content for me, and if you want to be further connected with the Strive Smart community, the Discord link is down below, the Facebook group link is down below and don't forget i'm running this drive smart merch black friday sale right now as well which is 20 percent off that's linked down below strivesmartstore.com is where you can get the merch so i'll catch you all in the next video thank you all for supporting it means a lot to me peace out